Xiaowen is a junior high school student who was influenced by her father, who worked in the library, and she loves to read, but she recently discovered that on the library card of each book, the same name, Jiro Amazawa, will appear. Xiaowen couldn't help but be curious about this boy, and sighed, he reads faster than me, he must be a very experienced person. The next day, Xiaowen went to the school library and borrowed a very rare book, opened the cover, and the person who sent the book was actually surnamed Tianza. At noon, she showed her good friend Yuko, the Japanese lyrics she composed for Country Road, and the two of them sang like this. When the two were chatting, Yuko saw the boy she liked and ran away, and Yuko hurriedly chased after him, and it turned out that her best friend liked Sujimura in the same class. The two were walking on the road, Xiaowen suddenly remembered that she was in a hurry when she chased Shizi, and left the borrowed book on the chair, and when she went back, she found a boy sitting there, holding the book he borrowed in his hand and reading. The boy returned the book to Xiaowen, laughing and saying that the cement road she wrote was too bad, it turned out that he peeked at the lyrics sandwiched in the book, and Xiaowen was almost angry. The next day, she was going to deliver a bento to her father. In the car, she meets a big fat cat rubbing the car, she talks to the cat, and the cat does not pay attention to her. When the tram arrived, she said goodbye to the cat and was about to get off, but the cat got off the bus before her, and she chased after the cat. Cross the street, cross the bridge, climb the stairs, and get into the alley, and just when she thinks the cat is playing tricks on her, the cat enters a shop called Earth House. This is a gift shop, there are a variety of handicrafts in it, and the cat duke on the table makes Xiaowen look at it intently, it seems to have life. The shopkeeper, the old man, was very hospitable, and showed her a tall table clock with the dwarfs of the miners, and the eagerly awaited king, and the queen, who would not appear until 12 o'clock, and even if every 12 hours, the real body would appear, but the king would still look at her every hour. The old man sighed that the person who designed this clock must have his own story, and the swing of the hands made Xiaowen return to reality. She was about to deliver a bento to her father, and when she came to the library, someone called her that it was the boy who said yesterday that her lyrics were not written well. It turned out that he was the grandson of the old grandfather just now, and Xiaowen, who had lost everything, left the lunch box for his father in the store. After delivering the lunch, the boy sang the lyrics written by Xiaowen and rode away, and he successfully angered Xiaowen again. Today is the day of school, Xiaowen took the book and asked Mr. Tianzi, who gave the book to the teacher, and the teacher said that Mr. Tianzi's youngest son is also in this school, which is Tianzi Erlang on the library card. Hearing the news, Xiaowen hurriedly ran out of the teacher's office, but saw the annoying boy, who came over from the opposite side, he pretended not to know Xiaowen, and really wanted to blow Xiaowen up. After school, Xiaowen went to the old man's shop again, but it was closed, and through the glass on the door, she found that the cat baron was gone. When she got home, she received a call from Yuko, ran out, and saw tears rolling in Yuko's eyes. It turns out that Sujimura found her, a late-blooming boy who didn't understand that Yuko liked him, and instead helped his friend send Yuko a confession letter. She felt that Sujimura didn't like her at all, so she felt very uncomfortable. At the end of school the next day, Sujimura called out to Xiaowen. He didn't know why he made Shizi angry, Xiaowen couldn't stand this boy anymore. She said that the other party was an idiot and couldn't tell that Yuko liked him, but Sujimura said that she liked Xiaowen, and Xiaowen rejected Sujimura, which was just two unrequited loves. The lost Xiaowen came to the gift shop again, although it was not opened, but the big fat cat was lying in front of the door, she sat next to it, the annoying boy called her name, and was curious that Ayu would let her touch. It turned out that the cat's name was Ayu, and the boy brought Xiaowen into the store through the side door and took out her favorite cat baron. Under the light, the jewel-like eyes seemed to flow like a galaxy, which is grandpa's treasure. She stared at the baron until the street lamp replaced the sun, and she went downstairs to see the boy in the corner concentrating on the violin. The boy's serious appearance was not so annoying, and she was amazed that the boy had a good experience and actually made a violin, and asked the boy to play it for herself, and the boy agreed. The condition was that Xiaowen wanted to sing for him, 
and the boy played Country Road, and Xiaowen also mustered up the courage to sing together. The old man and his friends came back, and when they saw this scene, they also joined in the performance, so harmonious, and the old man's friends praised Xiaowen's beautiful voice. Another friend said bluntly that he didn't expect Erlang to have such a cute friend, it turned out that the nasty ghost was Tianzi Erlang who he had always been curious about. Erlang wondered if he hadn't told Xiaowen, and Xiaowen said no. The sign at the door still says West House, and the quarrel between the two children makes the grandfather and his friends laugh. In the evening, Erlang sent Xiaowen home, and the two talked about their dreams in life, and Erlang said that his dream was to make a violin, but his parents never agreed. Before parting, he praised Xiaowen for her talent for writing poetry, singing well, and writing great lyrics. The next day, Erlang came to the classroom to find Xiaowen, and the two came to the rooftop, and Erlang said that his father agreed, but he had to go abroad first and go for an internship for two months. The sky was clear, the two of them were chatting with the railing, and the gossiping classmates ran up one by one to take a peek, and Erlang confessed. I had noticed Xiaowen a long time ago, and in order to let Xiaowen also notice herself, Erlang read a lot of books, just to let his name appear on the library card in advance. Knowing all this, Xiaowen was very confused. Sweet love comes suddenly, but soon it seems to be disappearing again. She began to doubt whether she was good enough, and Xiaowen decided to give it a try, and she wanted to spend these two months writing a book, and she would write the story of the Cat Baron. Xiaowen told Erlang's grandfather his idea, and the old man had no opinion, but he wanted to be the first reader. He took out a mica stone and asked Xiaowen to stare at the crack, and under the light of the flashlight, the emeralds in the gap shone brightly. He said that Xiaowen and Erlang, just like this stone, are untempered rough stones, ordinary on the outside, but the brilliance of the heart can only be revealed by carving and grinding. After leaving, Xiaowen went to the library and borrowed a lot of materials, and Erlang also came, he was leaving tomorrow. In the evening, the two cheered each other on, and after a short hand-holding, the two began their own trials. Xiaowen works day and night, even in class, and her grades plummet. When the teacher approached her parents, her parents talked to Xiaowen and asked her if what she was doing now was more important than studying. Xiaowen said that these two months were her own trials, and she couldn't tell her parents what she was doing. Dad agreed, and just like that, two months passed quickly, and the writing was ready. The Baron in the book has his lover, and they were an enviable couple, but they were separated by war. She took the finished product and found the old man, who thought it was very good after reading it, but Xiaowen knew that it was far from enough. He cooked a bowl of ramen for Xiaowen, and said that the first time Jiro made a violin, he cooked him a big bowl of ramen, and also gave the rough stone to Xiaowen. Xiaowen finished the trial and went home to sleep. In the early morning of the next day, Xiaowen suddenly woke up and opened the window, under the window was Erlang riding a bicycle, everything was like the arrangement of fate. Erlang rode a bicycle with Xiaowen to an uphill place, Xiaowen saw that he was struggling and wanted to get off, but Erlang insisted, I have no problem, I have already decided to take you over the mountains. Xiaowen finally jumped out of the car and said, I don't want to be a burden to you, I decided a long time ago to support you behind your back. The two rode a long way and finally came to the mountain, where they could see the whole city, which Jiro said was his secret base. Soon, the sun rose, and the first rays of light in the morning shone on the two people. Erlang said that in the future, when he was good enough, he wanted Xiaowen to marry him, Xiaowen agreed, and the two hugged each other. This is the end of the film, this movie is different from most of the pure love movies we see now. The protagonist in the movie does not die and live in love after falling in love, but two people meet together to become better, perhaps, this is what love should look like.